uh, just going to show you what the what BuyerBot does. So there's various ways of using it and triggering it. I'll just trigger it with a shortcut now. So if I click the shortcut, it pops up. It's basically a big menu. Um, some items have other stuff in it. So like dictionary, these are text templates. Um, if I just need to quickly paste uh, a name of a dictionary, I'll stick it in here. I've got passwords, uh, phone numbers, email addresses, put whatever here basically. And so this is constantly changing depending on what I'm what I'm doing at the at the moment. So in it, so like I've got all this is Chat GPT stuff. These are voice activated prompts. These this and this these use a different different underlying system. But um, let's say I want to ask Chat GPT something. So I don't know um, what is four times four. It could be anything really. So you just select it. And then I do the, the shortcut and then I click that. And it, I get the answer basically. Let me just try and translate something. So, um, translate something. So, um, dit is a train. This is a train in Dutch. Let's see. So, I'll select it, click my shortcut, translate. Sometimes it takes longer than other times, depending on which chat GPT you're using. This is a train, general translation. Here is a train, general paraphrasing, general slightly formal. So I've set it up to, to spit out 10 different versions and it knows like if I select Dutch, it will translate into English and vice versa. And all these things can be modified easily. So by doing, just edit the code. So the we're looking at, um, what are we looking at? The code for um, text actions here. Ask ChatGPT, so that is this function, this fun the translate function. Let's take a look at the translate function. Um, the translate function is down here. So the functions are here. Here's the translate one. Let me show you. Um, word wrap. Okay, so translate. Then you can type in whatever you want here, the prompts. So please generate a numbered list of 10 possible translations from Dutch to English if it is Dutch or from English to Dutch if it is English, ensuring the translations accurately convey the blah blah blah. And so these are all the different, um, here's the generate a reply, here's expand, here's explain, summarize, proofread. You are an expert proofreader, writer, editor, blah blah blah. Um, rephrase. So all these different things, basically, so these are all these ones. This is a whole different system that uses Talon, so which is my underlying um, open source dictation thing, which is uh, basically like Dragon. If I, so model fix grammar, but you have to, I have to turn on um, Talon for that. So let's take a look. Um, so Talon's asleep now. So wake up. And errors. So, model fix grammar. Well, didn't quite fix it, did it? It changed it. But yeah, these ones go to sleep. Um, these ones are voice activated. I can also voice activate these. So, anyway, I'm just, these are two completely different systems. I've also got text actions, for example. This is, I use this all the time. Um, if I have a, a patent uh, title in all caps and I want to change it, so let's say you just select something and you go to lowercase or you go to uppercase, it immediately switches it. That's just an auto hotkey thing in the background. Special characters. I've got bookmarks. Um, if I want to edit the website, the BuyerBot website, click that and it will open it in the editor online, auto hotkey forums, just basically whatever you want. And then I have searching. 
I can do a local search on my computer using software or web searches in any of these, and whatever I select will be pre-filled in the search box. Uh, multiple engines, if I click this one, it will search in my selection in all of these, or some of them, whatever I've set. These are behind paywalls, and these are all voice commands. Voice commands all for in memo queue. These are Talon voice commands, so like selecting words, copying, uh, anything really. Uh, this is all memo queue stuff, so add a comment, filter text, uh, show invisible printing characters, confirm the segment, add it to the glossary, save it to the project glossary, split segments, join, merge. Basically, I just add stuff um, as I go. So if I'm translating and suddenly I think, oh, that would be cool, I just add it. And uh, so this is constantly moving around like you know, this is filling up, and once it gets too full, I might stick it somewhere else, and um, I can have drop-down menus, I mean, endlessly, really. Um, but yeah, so basically, this is it. Let's do one web search. So, mm, it's undergoing. Oh, no, look, see, pre-filled. Very useful. Um, Uh, let's try someone else. How about uh, this is always good. Mm. Yeah, so basically this is it so far. And it, yeah, it, it very much, the idea you sketched very much reminds me of co-translator, which I used for a bit. Um, but it seemed quite clunky, the copying, pasting, and all that. And uh, instead of copying and pasting, you can basically just add anything you want with, uh, with a little bit of auto hotkey or Python. Uh, I'm using uh, Talon in the background, so Talon is a whole different thing. So wake up. This is Talon here. Edit commands. Go to sleep. These are all my talent commands. Um, so, like, these are my voice commands. So, I write the voice command here, for example, um, to your split segment. So, split segments, and it will do this key, Alt T. So, and this is the Talon voice command, and Talon is this system down here, which is the open source dragon, a dragon that actually works and doesn't slow down your computer. Um, let's get rid of that. So, basically, I add a voice command, for example, then I go over and stick it in the menu somewhere and then put it somewhere, basically, and then it works. So yeah, that's just a short overview of what, what I've been working on.